following his decisive defeat by the Duke of Wellington at the Battle of Victoria on the 21st of June 1813, Marshal Soult withdrew to the Pyrenees and back into France, where Napoleon ordered him to take over command of the French armies in Spain. In place of his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, and his chief of staff, Marshal Jourdain. He was tasked with relieving the French garrisons under siege by the Allies at Pabloma and San Sebastian, and to re-establish French control in Spain. Despite of Napoleon withdrawing troops from Spain to rebuild his Grand Armée, Salt managed to consolidate a force of around 80,000 men. On July the 15th, Salt received intelligence informing him that the French garrison at San Sebastian could hold out for a further two weeks. Therefore, he planned to first relieve the siege at Pabloma and then to relieve the siege at San Sebastian. Salt planned for two simultaneous attacks to converge on Pabloma. He ordered General Derlon commander of a force of 21,000 men to seize and secure the Maya Pass, while ordering Generals Raleigh and Casale to seize and secure the Roncesvalles Pass with their force of around 40,000 men. However, Salt had supply problems and was only able to supply his advancing troops with four days rations. Meanwhile, Wellington, with his headquarters at Lesaca, had deployed his allied force of around 62,000 men in a defensive line in the Western Pyrenees. To keep a check on any possible French advance across the French border, while waiting for the sieges at San Sebastian and Pabloma to end successfully. With Major General Howard's 1st Division on the left wing, on the coast, by the mouth of the Bidasoa River. Major General Alton's Light Division at Lesaca, the Earl of Dalhousie's 7th Division at El Salau, Lieutenant General Stewart's 2nd Division at the Maya Pass, with Lieutenant General Cole's 4th Division at the Roncesvalles Pass, and Major General Morello's Spanish Division at Roncesvalles on their right wing. While in reserve were Major General Pack's 6th Division at Donateve and Lieutenant General Picton's 3rd Division at Olegi. The French began their offensive on the 25th of July taking the Allies in the Maya Pass, commanded by General Stuart, by surprise, who had believed that the French would not attack the pass, and went to investigate reports of French movements 10 miles to the south. Durlon attacked the pass and soon broke through the small Allied force, who tried unsuccessfully to retake the pass. However, the narrow pass helped the British to temporarily hold off the superior French numbers. When finally Stuart returned in the afternoon, he began to withdraw his troops, who were in an extremely precarious position. However, the British 7th Division arrived to deliver a flanking attack, which ended the day's action. Allied casualties at the Maya Pass numbered around 1,600 while French losses numbered around 2,100. That evening, General Hill ordered an Allied retreat towards Elizondo. Meanwhile, Durlon was concerned about the British flanking attack and began a cautious pursuit of the Allies the next day. Meanwhile, the Roncesvalles Pass, which was held by Allied forces, commanded by General Cole, was attacked in the early morning by the forces of Cassell and Relay. 
Although heavily outnumbered, the Allies put up a determined defence, delaying the French advance for around three hours, but started to withdraw by mid-afternoon as their ammunition began to run out. However, Cole managed to reinforce his position and continue his defensive action until late in the afternoon, when thick fog enveloped the battlefield to end the fighting. The Allies suffered around 350 casualties at the Roncevelles Pass, while the French suffered around 530 casualties. Concerned by the superior French numbers, Cole withdrew his troops towards Pavlona. Cole also convinced General Picton to withdraw. Due to the fog at the Roncesvalles Pass, the French failed to realise that the Allies had withdrawn. Meanwhile, Wellington, believing that Derlon's force was the main French attack, issued orders to strengthen his defences in the direction of the Maya Pass and left General Hill in charge at Elizondo to keep Derlon in check, while he rode towards Pabloma on the 27th of July to find out what was happening for himself. Meanwhile, Picton had decided to make a stand and give battle to the French forces. He deployed Cole's division on a steep ridge to the northeast of Pavloma and a hill above the village of Zabordica on the river Arga, effectively blocking the path of the planned French advance. While Picton had deployed his division with cavalry and artillery support to the southeast of Cole's position along the river Egez, Spanish troops were deployed as a reserve on a ridge behind Cole's position. As Casale's force arrived at Zabordica, he immediately sent a detachment to seize the overlooking hill, without realising that it was already occupied by Allied troops, and were quickly repelled. Finally realising that the Allies had occupied the ridge and the hill in front of him, Casale deployed his force on a ridge to the north parallel to the Allied position. He launched a further attack on the Allied hill, but after an initial success, he was again repelled. Wellington then arrived on the battlefield to discover the French divisions on the ridge facing the Allied position. He immediately ordered the nearby 2nd, 6th and 7th divisions to concentrate there. The following day, at around 10.30am, the Allied 6th Division began to arrive on the battlefield from the west. The French finally began their attack in the early afternoon. With three of Cassell's divisions attacking the left wing of the Allied position, while one of Relier's divisions was sent across the connecting ridge, and the other of Relier's divisions was sent to attack the hill on the right of the Allied ridge. Meanwhile, Foy, with support of a light cavalry division, moved to attack Picton on the right wing of the Allied line. Casale sent one of his divisions into the village of Surulain, where fierce fighting ensued with the Allied 6th Division. Casale then ordered this division to withdraw from the village and join the attack on the ridge. However, they were brought to a halt by volley fire from Allied troops on the ridge and from the 6th Division. One of Cassell's divisions managed to scowl the ridge, but was driven off by an Allied counter-attack. Meanwhile, the remaining Cassell division and the division of Relier's command sent across the connecting ridge made slow progress up on the ridge before both being driven off by Allied counter-attacks. Meanwhile, on the French left, the other Aurelier's divisions was attacking the hill and achieved some initial success driving back the Spanish division. 
but were finally driven back themselves down the hill by British volley fire. On the French extreme left, Foyd's men saw no action other than a cavalry skirmish. At around 4.30pm, having failed to make any significant headway, Salt called off the attack. The Allied losses during this engagement were around 2,600, while the French losses were around 4,000. By the 30th of July, Salt had decided to withdraw. Foy's division, together with the remnants of Reliers and Cassel's forces, retreated via the Rosenvelles Pass. While Derlon led the rest of the French army, pushing back Hill's forces to force their escape. The French retreated, fighting a continued rearguard action. As the retreat continued, Salt's army began to starve and lose their discipline. However, they continued to march northeastwards and finally reached the French frontier on August the 2nd. Wellington chose not to continue a vigorous pursuit of the French, preferring to redeploy his forces in its original defensive line until the sieges at San Sebastian and Pabloma had ended successfully. The series of conflicts, collectively known as the Battle of the Pyrenees, was another demoralizing setback for the French, with their casualties totaling around 13,000, while the Allied casualties were around 7,000. <laughs> 